conceptual analysis and finance is the survey paper. We're going to review three things. I'm going to do three things. One of them is sentiment analysis. Number two is this law. I'm sure you're all excited about that. And number three is financial document readability. I have problems at home. <laughs> I, I live with a bunch of teenagers. Does anybody else live with teenagers? They're called my children. But then, no, seriously, does, am I the only one with teen? What kind of language do they use? When, assuming they do talk to you. <laughs> Sorry. What kind of language does your teenagers use when they speak with you? Sick. Very, Sick. <laughs> okay. Very casual. Casual. What I would say inappropriate. <laughs> This is not good. I like presidential candidates. But what I learned is that after now, you can see if you disagree with me, after 20 minutes of talking to my kids, I learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I learned absolutely nothing. Why? Why do I learn absolutely nothing? They, it's the language they use. I had to become a researcher in this to figure this out. <coughs> what kind of words do they use? They use weak modal words. They use weasel words. These are the kind of words that my kids use all the time. May, my, could, I mean, I like to laugh at a little bit, possibly, appears. Right? Well, it's not random, but it's just, they're not saying anything. Like they might do, they need to do their homework. They could see their grandparents. They, 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 right? they could. They could be back before curfew, <laughs> hanging on the roads and possibly traffic patterns. And, you know, there I did it, right? You know, and I'm sitting there counting the number of weak modal words that they use when they talk to me. And they use 100 words and 15 of them are weak modal. And they go, I got a bunch of weasels here, right? Now, what happens if the CEO starts talking like a teenager? And in the context, not inappropriate, thank you, but in the context of using weak modal words, a high frequency of weak modal words, well, this might happen or this could happen. And at the end of the day, he was like, I've learned nothing from this conference call or ideal prospectus or annual report, right? And not surprisingly, academics, evidence shows that Firms with a high fraction of weak modal words in their annual reports or IPO prospectus have higher subsequent stock market stock return volatility. Why? Because we don't we're having difficulty pricing these things. We're not getting information from management. Paul talked Paul that law talked a little bit about bag of words, but he didn't really define it. And so what it is is this we're kind of counting the frequency of each word that appears within the document. But the key is that the word sequence is completely ignored. I don't look at the context. I am just counting the number of weak modal words my teenagers use. Right? And I talk about the homework or the context of the homework or their, their um, visiting their grandparents or whatever. And although very simplistic, doesn't it sound very simplistic? Just to count the frequency of words, that's about the easiest thing in the world, right? But it's actually very, very powerful. And so Paul alluded to this a little bit. To measure tone in documents, typically, is the proportion of negative words. More negative words in a document, right? Newspaper article, more pessimistic is considered the tone. Why don't I talk about positive words? How come most academics just focus on the negative? And the, no, it's true, though. It's true. And, and the reason is, is when I fire you later for laughing, right? <laughs> I'm going to talk about, you're a great worker. You've been working here a long time, and all these positive words. And then I say, you'll be doing other opportunities later. And you know, I won't actually use too many negative words. I'll pad this negative information with so many positive words that you're, if you're counting it, you're like, I think this is a good event. No. <laughs> no, it's not. no it's not. So think about this. How would you measure, we have a bunch of journalists here, how would you measure the sentiment of a financial document or a newspaper column discussing financial news? Think about that. Well, the, I'm going to do four ways. The first one is you could survey co colleagues and say, what well, words do you think are negative? 
going back to the last uh, presentation, catastrophic. Whew, that's a great word. Hey, that's a word they almost never use in their annual reports. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It will appear in media, but they will not use it in their annual report. Disastrous. No, they're not going to use that <laughs> word. They're going to avoid it, right? So that's not so good. Hey, you know, we could read a couple newspaper articles and annual reports and kind of come up with lists. Nah, that doesn't sound too good, right? We're going to miss the pop. Number three, we'll go off the shelf. We'll grab the Harvard General, uh, uh, General Inquirer, or GI, uh, dictionary. Now, this word list was not created with financial documents in mind. Everybody <coughs> see that? Right, this is psychology and sociology. Do you think that's going to translate well into business? What do you think? I don't think so. So what Bill and I found is about 75%, you know, that's three quarters of all the Harvard <laughs> negative words actually don't have pessimistic meaning when they're used in the context of an annual report. Wow. Right? We're not doing so well here. And so here are high frequency negative words that appear in annual reports according to Harvard. Tax. Not tax rate. Cost. Capital, board, am I making this up? <laughs> board is a negative word. <laughs> Liability, of course, of course. Vice, foreign, depreciation. None of these words are negative when they appear in an annual report, right? They're talking about the board of directors. They're talking about the vice presidents, right? Everybody found it? So there's, there's going to be a lot of misclassification <laughs> if I use like an off-the-shelf dictionary that was made for sociology. And what's fascinating is several of the Harvard negative words are likely to proxy for specific industries. Right? Crude. I think it's bad to say a crude joke, right? <laughs> what industry do you think would call use that word a lot? <laughs> I think it's the oil industry, crude oil. Yeah, I have cancer, that's bad, isn't it? Cancer is a bad word. Now, in the context of a business document, do you think it's gonna be bad? No, they're curing cancer, <laughs> right? Right, isn't that good? And the one that I think is the funniest is mine. I don't even know if that's a negative word. I gotta think about that. How often do you think a mining company will mention this silver mine, this gold mine, this platinum mine, a boatload, right? I mean a boatload. So you have these high negative counts and just, you know, <laughs> just proxies for industry. And you look at those words, are those negative words in the context of business? There, there's no way, there's no way. So what Bill and I did is we actually did the fourth method. So we didn't survey people, we didn't look at a few, we didn't use off the shelf. We actually looked at the words that managers use in an annual report. And we looked at, you had to be within, you know, um, at least 5% of the 10Ks. And what we did is, you know, Jason, I could say, Jason, here, here are the 10 key words to avoid. And he would write a little document on the column, right? That would be one of his 52 columns, and he'd be all set, right? The problem with that is it's, yeah, it's easy to avoid those words, right? Don't say the word catastrophic. OK. You know, right? I mean, that, that's really easy. So what Bill and I said, no, we're going to get every last word. So you can't write around it. And also, we looked at the most likely interpretation of a word, right? Like once in a while, cancer could be a bad one, right? But generally, it's not. So it wouldn't be on our word list. And what we did is uh, we have an extensive word list, 552, 300, excuse me, 354 positive words, and 2,329 uh, negative words. Isn't that kind of fascinating in the English language? There's a lot more ways of saying bad things than good, isn't that? Right? Okay. 
So I'm going to show you the top 10 words. And this is the power of the bag of words. So I can quickly show good old Jason, here are the 10 most frequently occurring words in annual reports. Okay? Loss. Oh, that's pretty. Losses, claims, impairment, against, adverse, restated. I like to see that in the annual report. Adversely, uh, restructuring, and litigation. There. We did it. Right? So I can show you, look, these are the words that drive my analysis. And you can sit there and say, well, maybe I, whether I agree or not. So what's amazing is these are 10 words. I just said there's 2,329 negative words. That's 0.4% of all the words. Guess what? These 10 words account for 33% of all the negative words occurring in an annual report. Isn't that amazing when you think about it? I could say all these negative words, but really 10 accounts for a third. Why do you think that is? This is our second point. Ziff's law. And it's the driving force between these trip wires or word classifications is that word counts tend to follow a power law distribution. In other words, Jason, there's only a few words that will dominate the frequencies of these word dictionaries. And this is important. If we mess up, right, and we have like a bad word in there, we're looking at the oil industry, we use the Harvard word list, and we, and we let crude coming in, go in, it will drive our analysis, right? And that's not even a negative word. So if one of these words is misclassified, it will potentially drive the analysis. Ooh, you can't really see this too well. But what this is is the frequency, the 25 most frequently occurring words in all 10 Ks and 10 Qs over this time period. And you basically see it's the same kind of relation where just what I was saying, just a handful of words drives the analysis. So the most common words appearing in the 10K, you ready for this? The, <laughs> and, in, to, of, you know? I mean, that, that's it. And they have a very, very high frequency. And same with the negative words. So now we're going to go on our third point, which is we're going to try to measure financial readability. Unfortunately, we had some people sitting next to me, and I kept talking to them. Like, how do you measure financial readability, right? Readability in a financial, and they would never, you know, we never got it down. Because I think this is really hard, isn't it? How would you measure, we have Jake journalists here. How would you measure readability? Why are some texts easier to understand than others? And now, regulators and financial researchers have really struggled with this notion. How do you measure readability in mandated financial disclosures? So Bill and I, in another paper, we propose defining readability as the effective communication of valuation relevant information. That's why they're creating an annual report, Gary. They're trying to disseminate information. Does everybody agree with that? That's really the purpose of what's going on. I'm going to tell you about my firm. And the better job I do at telling you about my firm, the lower my standard deviation of stock return should be, my volatility, right? the lower the analyst forecast error should be, and the lower the analyst dispersion should be. I think most of you would sit there and say, that makes some sense, right? right? The better communication of what's going on, the less the uh, volatility in the errors. Now, there's something called a fog index. In accounting, and mostly accounting, but some finance literature has really picked it up picked up on it as a measure of readability, the fog index. And you know what's beautiful about it? it? It is so simple. That's what sells, isn't it? How many components do you think are in the fog index? What do you think, Harry? That's it? You knew you would get it right. There are only two components. This is easy. The first one, Harry, is the average number of uh, average sentence length in word. Right? And the other one is complex word. Now, Paul would sit there and say, ooh, complex words. These are high-level words. No, 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 no. In the fog index, it's more than two <laughs> syllables. I can't even make that up. Right? More than two syllables. That's complex? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so and the beauty of this is it tells you the grade level here. Look at this high-level formula. We take the average words per sentence, 
you know, financial 10Ks, it's about annual reports, it's about 25. The percentage of complex work is about 25. Times it by 0.4, you need 18 years of education to read a typical US annual report. There I did it. Everybody follow that? Right? That's pretty simple. Now let's focus on this complex work component. Do you think that's a good measure of readability? No. It's actually a horrible measure. And it's 50% of the weight. It's got two components, and one of them is horrible. Right? And so allegedly, you know, the Fog Index it indicates that as an increase in the number of complex words, more than two syllables, decreases the readability and accounts for half of it. However, business text, everybody follow this? We're talking about business text. We're not talking about Dr. Seuss, okay? We're not. We're talking about business text. It is full of complex words. These are the most frequently occurring complex words in U.S. annual reports. Financial, company, I think I got that one down. Interest, agreement, including, including. that's pretty low. Uh, operations, period, and related. And if I kept going and showing you more and more and more of these, they're like, none of these are hard. Yeah, they're really obvious, right? Management is the next one. I think most readers of a 10K, when they see the word management, they're not going to be forced to consult their dictionaries, right? So in academics, so often what happens is, Paul, if I say, ooh, this is bad, people say, okay, okay, the fog index is bad. Give me an alternative, right? That's the way, all right, Charlie, Charlie, yeah, that's the way academics work. It's like it's easy to criticize, right? But it's hard to kind of be positive. So what we came up with is using the document file size, just the number of megabytes required to store the documents reported on the SEC website as a simple and admittedly imperfect proxy for readability. File size correlates very strongly with the number of words. But once again, the problem with number of words is I have to actually count them all. It's a little bit problematic, right? And I need a, a good dictionary to make sure that these are actually words. They're not typos or they're, I'm not catching some code. Uh, and we show that the file size, how big is the document, relates to post filing return volatility and other measures of the information environment in a manner consistent with the notion of readability. Once again, I'm thinking about dissemination of information. Uh, how do you think uh, in your report, do you think they're becoming more or less readable? What do you think about that? I'm doing a good job of time. We're almost done. I think they're becoming less readable myself. Okay? And what I'm going to show you is a graph of the time series of the number of words in annual reports, U.S. annual reports. I did this in honor of this conference. Just pulled this out. What do you think the, what do you think the trend is in terms of the number of words on these documents, annual reports? It's up. Oh, yeah, Charlie? It's up over 100%. So now the typical, the average publicly traded company has about 50,000 words. They are doing data dumps on us, right? They're getting longer and longer. And then when they get longer and longer, it's less likely that people will actually open it up, right, and, and read it, OK? So just a quick review. We're doing great for time. Word list designed specifically for business communication should be used to measure con uh, sentiment in business text, right? I don't want to use sociology words in my business text because words like crude or cancer or mine or bore or liability or depreciation, these are not negative words in business context. I think you all agree with that. Uh, we we'll talk about Ziff's Law, which documents the fact that a very small number of words will dominate the frequency counts. So in other words, if you're going to create a dictionary, you want to show people, hey, here's all the words, right? And here are the words that drive it, full, talking about full disclosure here, right? By its very nature, I think most of us would agree, business text has an extremely high percentage of complex words. Once again, complex words is just more than two syllables, right, according to the Fog Index. It's one of the two components, and when you look at the words that investors use, they're very easily understood. They're not using SAT, uh, SAT words. 
And so when you, when you use the word readability in the context of financial documents, you want to think about what that means, right? It's really hard to pin that down, but I really believe it, and Bill agrees, it deals with the dissemination of information. That's why they're creating these mandated documents, right? I want to tell you how things are going. And I think that the size of an uh, annual report is an easily calculated proxy for document readability. Thank you. I kind of have a couple te technical questions. One is that uh, the risk factor section, that yeah. may have a lot of negative words. Yeah. So I was wondering how you adjust for that, or is that just baseline? Also, when there's a lawsuit, they'll repeat it like 14 times in a 10K. The other thing is that with the file size, are you excluding exhibits from that? Because those can be pre pretty lengthy. Oh, we include, we include exhibits. Um, we look at, um, yeah, the, the whole thing, the whole thing. And then what, what, what about the fact that the risk, risk factor section? Be yeah, well, the risk factor, well, that's going to be, it's going to be captured, too. And you're right, they tend to repeat these things. They tend to repeat these things. And I think the risk factor does tend to be a little bit negative. So on a technical note, sometimes it's difficult to parse in correctly because we have, like, 60,000 of these documents. There's like 12.5 billion words that we look at. And so it's hard to actually go in and grab exactly the risk factor section and all these other little attributes. But you're right, some sections could be better or worse. But, you know, so it's just kind of a quick thing. Grab, but we grab the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, did you correlate with volatility? I mean, did you show that the dispersion of the yeah. investment? Yeah, I didn't show the regression results. Okay, but, but, but so these measures actually yeah. do correlate yeah. with. I know my audience. I know my audience. <laughs> I was joking with uh, Dennis and uh, David about they're going to they show regressions. So I'm like, I don't know if you want to do that. Hi, uh, can you use your uh, methodology to analyze the, the statement from the Fed? From the what? From the Federal Reserve. Uh, some people are doing that. Andrew Wu is looking at that. Looking at the, so yeah, people. You, you, could, but they, it's one of those things where they know you're looking at it, so then, oh, you know, it, it gets a little bit complicated here. I, I wonder what's driving this. Uh, is it um, um, legalese? Is it um, uh, companies intentionally trying to, to fog? No, I, I think it deals Poor English. With what Paul was saying about the lawsuits, I mean, you know, like if you look at Visa's IPO prospectus when they went public, it was chock full of legal words because they were sued by every single entity in the world. Every state was suing them, every vendor was suing them, and it went on and on. I think that's a really interesting presentation. I think I'd just like to go into bat a little bit for the fog index because um, I was just thinking about this in the context of my dealings with the IRS because I sort of, I mean, the thing is, I understand all of the words individually in terms of an IRS form, but together they make no sense to me at all. It's completely impenetrable. And I was just wondering if there was any provision in your study for uh, the, the, how these words are bound together. Like, you know, like you were saying, a lot, a lot, in practice, a lot of these corporate reports are becoming more unreadable. And yet the words presumably are remaining pretty much yeah, the same. Yeah, but it's just the length. It's, ju yeah. it's just the length. Is it, is it also like sentence complexity? Is there an added element of that, do you think? But I don't know if the word, you know, once again, going back to the fog index, you know, average words per sentence is probably a pretty good proxy, right? But, but the word complex, more than two syllables, and the, you know, that, that, that's actually not, not. What's fascinating about this is, do you think that jargon would be positive or negative? Almost every single readability study says jargon is bad. Uh -uh. Bill and I find that jargon is good. And it, deal, it deals with, I could quickly communicate with good old Hugh here about when I say the word depreciation. He knows exactly what I mean. Or I could spend like all this time talking about it. Depreciation is a bit of a jargon word, right? 
And so what we find is the more jargon, the better information content. Which is kind of, which is like counter to it, but once again, it's in the context of business. So the analysts and investors are like, yeah, I know that word. Yeah? Well, the work that you have done, you have customized these specifically for 10K reports. Obviously, they are all about finance, but that doesn't necessarily extend to everything else. I mean, it doesn't mean that necessarily news, tweets, et cetera, can exactly use I know, the signature. I, know. I mean, many people have used some, it. Some people, that's right. You said it perfectly. Many people have actually used our word list in other contexts, even though it was created just for annual reports, looking at the language that they use. Tweets are hard because they use slang like wicked. Like I would think wicked is a bad thing. No, wicked stock is good, <laughs> right? And so you have to kind of, and it kind of moves across time. Sometimes that's a good word, sometimes that's a bad word. <coughs> yeah? How much of the increase in the number of you think is coming from actual improved disclosure and transparency, so more second data, more commentary? I think, I think a lot of it is the SEC like, has a uh, bent on more disclosure is better. And so there are, you know, like from what I've talked to managers, anytime they have something in their risk factor section, it can never be removed. It's there for eternity. <laughs> which, which, which is not actually even think about it. Well, maybe some risks went away. No, you had it last year. Do you think investors are sophisticated enough to separate out the legalese from? Well, once again, these documents are getting pretty big. And so uh, we have, we did a uh, Freedom of Information Act with the SEC and we got the Eggers search logs, how many people hit <coughs> the 10 Ks and all, and it is shocking how low the numbers are. <laughs> I mean, people are not hitting these things. I seem to be about the only person in the world hitting them. <laughs> I, I go on, who goes on Edgar all the time? Okay, well, yeah, but, th but this, it should be everybody here. This is a high-end group here, right? I go it on all the time, and I look at the numbers, and I go, it's just building on them. We're the only ones doing that from our class. I do it all the time. Huh? Whenever I deal with a media person, they have a question. I'm like, hey, let's look that up. I want to you know, understand if get the numbers right, right? The first source. No one else is doing that. So that's the problem with they're getting so big that people are like, I don't want to buy it. Right? You guys did a great job. Thank you.